issues. So welcome to our class, our first class for ECE 9039L, machine learning from theory to applications. So I'll share my screen right now. So we can start with the course outlines. Everybody can see my screen? Yeah, perfect. Yeah, thank you. So uh, the course description, the objective of our course is to give you like an introduction to machine learning techniques based in a unified probabilistic approach, regression, classification, clustering, neural network, mixture model, and symbol method, and the structure prediction will be covered in this course. Students will get a hands-on experience with machine learning from a series of practical engineering case studies. So this course is restricted to an engineer student, is restricted to an engineer student. So PhD and master can register in the winter version of this course. So the summer version of this course is only for MEng, but master and PhD, they can audit the course, but it not will be counted to their course load during their degrees. Only MEng student, it will be counted. So here is my information. This is my email. The class timing is from 8.30 to 11.30 via Zoom link. And office hour Mondays from 1 to 2 via Zoom or by appointment. So it's better to send me an email. So we either meet during this, uh, this office hour or we can arrange for any external time. Also in the course website in OWL, you will find also uh, Afshin email, our course TA, and uh, his office hour would be by appointment. So you can uh, send uh, him an email, then he can arrange for in-person meeting if you want or via Zoom, as you agreed between the student and the TA. Our course delivery format would be blended learning format. So lectures will be delivered, uh, will be delivered uh, via Zoom, will be delivered via Zoom in a live presentation. Exam, the final exam will be conducted in person with no exception. So don't send me an email that I couldn't make it. Can I have it online? This is the university rules for blended learning. So the lectures delivered online and the exam and the project presentation will be in person. We'll talk about that in a bit. So it's mandatory. It's mandatory to be. And as you know, the project presentation and the final exam will be one after each, the other. So if you need to be in person, so it would be like a matter of 10 days, 12 days to be in campus. So you can do your presentation and you can also sit for the final exam. So our topics during this course, as we said, it's giving you an introductory. We cannot cover everything in machine learning. I studied machine learning like for five years in PhD and now for two years and I consider there is a lot remain to be learned by me. So it's a huge knowledge, a huge number of techniques every year, as we'll see now in the introduction chapter, that every year is a lot of algorithm, a lot of technique, a lot of methodology that lie under machine learning come out and start be, to be used by big companies, by different applications. So today we'll have an introduction to machine learning. Then today I will not cover this. Uh, we will make like a revision about some important math principles that we will use during the course, like probability theory, linear algebra, basic linear algebra, revision, and we'll talk about some optimization thing. We need a few things in multivariate calculus. We'll talk about those once we need them in the course. Then we will start in week five with supervised learning, regression, and the classification problems. Then the character, it depends on the time, the characterization of time series data. 
what are the trends there, how we will use them, then the regular, uh, regularized regression, then unsupervised learning, we'll talk about clustering, and uh, one of these uh, clustering algorithm is k-nearest neighbor, mixture model, expectation uh, EM uh, algorithm, the expectation maximization. Uh, then we'll talk about principal component analysis. And here we'll talk about application like anomaly detection, uh, then introduction to neural network. And the last, we'll talk about machine learning workflow, feature selection, algorithm evaluation, variance test, cross-validation, bias. You know, a lot of topic will be covered in this course. Some some will will be some will be on uh, a bit deep detail some it will be like a brief so this course will put your leg on the first step in the machine learning environment or field let to say uh, and it, this field as i told you before that could be applied in anything, in health, in finance, in business, in um, education, any field, since we have data, then machine learning could play a vital role in these applications. So these are the learning outcomes. So, by the end of this course, you should have a good understanding of fundamental issues and challenges of machine learning, data feature selection, model selection, and model complexity. Also, you will have like some strengths and weaknesses of many popular machine learning approaches. Understand the underlying mathematical relationship within the across machine learning algorithm. Be able to design and implement machine different or various machine learning algorithm. And we will try to have a real world engineering problems to be applied. Assessment in this course, we will have final exam, which will be conducted in person, which will examine what, what have been covered during the course. The weight of this exam is 40%. Participation in a class activities, this will weigh 10%. Sometimes I will throw a question, and the next class, some students need to answer this question. Sometimes I ask a verbal question to certain students. So this will be counted and weighed 10% if your total mark. And we have a project 50%. The project has three phases. The first phase, we call it project progress report. Uh, so the project topics will be decided soon. Maybe in the next two weeks, we'll form the groups. It will be a group project. We'll form the groups and uh, start picking the titles. Then by June 5, you have to submit the progress report, which weighed 5% of your uh, uh, course weight. Then uh, we will have, by the end of the term, group presentation in person. Once we have the groups on uh, everything, so we will put a schedule for the presentation and you'll know it during May. During May, you'll know when your final project presentation will be. And those will be between July 25th to August 5th. It depends on the group size and how many groups do we have. And this presentation will be in person. Uh, that the course TA will be in the classroom on that day. I will be via Zoom watching the presentation and uh, the group will get a mark, 15%. However, uh, attendance is mandatory during this presentation because, you know, my philosophy in this that uh, same as other students will attend your presentation and watch your presentation as a kind of respect you should be available to see their presentation also so attendance is mandatory during presentation days in campus and you have to attend all presentation not like some students i faced like previous terms that once they are they they join the class 
10, 15 minutes before their presentation. And after they're done, they left. This is not a good habit. You are a master, you are a graduate student. So after your graduation from master, most of you, if you will work in Canada or outside of, in Canada, you will be in a good position. So you have to show respect to your colleagues, even in a workplace, also in this program. Uh, then final project report and code submission. This would be the deadline to submit your code, your final project uh, on August 7, 2022. And for any report or any written report submitted or the final project report or the progress report, those will be tested via Turnitin. So it should be original writing, not copy and paste from the net. Copy and paste will result in a mark deduction or considered as academic offense here at Western. Okay, I'll talk about the group size. Young John, just a second. So till today, we have like 34 students in this course. So we'll make like the group size five to six students. It could be four. Uh, we will share with you soon uh, a Google Sheet that you can add your name and pick your group. And for those who don't have or don't know students, uh to add their names or they can add their names as individual then we'll put them either in those individuals in a group in a separate group or we can add their name to certain group so for the group size like the optimal is five however we can accept six in certain group or four in some other group um so we'll share the Google Sheet soon, before the end of this week. So you can start adding your name. You can like, for example, contact your colleagues. And uh, for example, we are like five students. You can put your name in the sheet uh, for the group. Then we can manage these groups. After that, after we finalize the group, then we can start picking the topic. So. After we release and I see there are some group, then we'll open the floor to pick the topic. The topic should be approved by my, me and the TA. The project topic should be approved by me and the TA and we'll talk about it later. So like the collaborated work, it will be the group project, the group presentation, which will present the group project. Activities that will be done individually, exam, any class activities. So if you see that I didn't add any assignment to this course because I need all the groups to work hard in the project. So I need a high quality project. I need a high quality project. And you will, I need everybody to learn. And for example, like, member X of the group, he was responsible like for data pre-processing. But at the same time, and group member Y, he will do part of the implementation. If I ask you in the presentation, why you did this to X? And he said, oh, sorry, I just do the data pre-processing. I don't know what they did here, no. You have to be aware about each part of the group work. It's your group project, so you have to understand everything. That's why I didn't add assignment. I don't want you to be busy in assignment at the same time in the project, no. So I tried my best to give you enough time. I don't want you to be extremely busy in assignment uh, and the project at the same time, no. So I leave everything to the project to receive a high quality product. I hope this is a clear. I hope this will be clear. Okay, so these are recommend recommended references because you know there is a lot of books about machine learning. Every book is suitable. 
if it's like take the topic the same way we'll take it in the course and most of machine learning books they took the consider the topics same as how it will be delivered in this course however those books are would form a good references for you and if needed in some handouts or in some topics I'll make a handwritten notes. I will upload them to OWL. And also I will use the board, the touch board or the tablet, sometimes to mark <coughs> and to explain the topic. Uh, also these things or these highlighted or written in a presentation will be uploaded also. So anything covered will be uploaded to OWL. So you have the full set of resources and materials. Cheating, you know the cheating policy here, the conduct, the health, the health and wellness services, sickness, all available in the course outline, which is uploaded to all of you, which is uploaded to all of you like two days ago or three days, I don't remember. So any question about the course outline? Questions? So the first point, maybe tomorrow, after tomorrow, I will make an announcement with a link to Google Sheet and the instruction to form your groups. Any question about your group, about how is the assessment policy, how we will do? Ah, some of you, they send me an email asking, so this today's first class and the last class would be August 9th. And I will do my best to be our final exam day. So I don't use like two, three days extra in August for the final exam. So I'll try my best to have like our final exam approximately will be August 9th. I'll put like a course plan also. This will be announced maybe next week with approximate date for each task when it will be released, when it will be done, when it should be submitted. All of these, I'll put a course plan. Normally, I stick with the course plan. Sometimes we need to change certain point due to the circumstances of the course delivery and how, it's go how the things are going on. Clear, guys? Questions? Okay, since it's not, there is no question, we will move to start with our first week material. Did you receive an email that I uploaded the handout? Yeah, we received it. Okay, sounds good. So you have access to it, right? Okay, good. So our handout one, which is introduction to machine learning. This is an introductory slides that will give you like an another overview about the course. What is machine learning? What do we mean by machine learning? How it was defined in 1990s? Because you know, machine learning or pattern recognition start talking about it in 1950s. But we'll talk about how, what do we mean by machine learning in the last two decades? So what is machine learning? Learning is any process by which a system improves performance from experience. Tom Mitchell in 1998 said that machine learning is the study of algorithms that within the time they are improving their performance and we call it P at some task and we call the task T with experience E. So a well-defined learning task is given by the combination of this P, T and E. 
What does that mean? What does that mean? So machine learning that we are studying algorithms, that those algorithms within the time and the training, they are improving their performance. So our the algorithm performance at the first use will not be at the same performance when we like use it in the 10th use. So within the time, every time we are using the algorithm, every time we are using the algorithm, the algorithm will be improved. On certain task T, which is the problem under consideration that we are applying this algorithm to solve a certain problem, and we call the task T, how the performance will be improved? By learning by experience. And we call this in the machine learning field training process. So the algorithm train itself based on the data or the input data. And if we are using a supervised learning, as we'll discuss like in uh, next few slides, that we know the class of the training sample and what was being classified. So the, it's like a complete learning process, same as a human. So how you learn, how you learn and you improve your knowledge and your skills as an engineer, how? Anybody can tell me? By studying, practicing, with your experience, Uh, yeah, by learning, find the rules, yes. All of those things called learning process. They are part of the learning process. So algorithm that improve their fair performance and we call the, the algorithm performance P for task under consideration and we call it T and it's improved with experience and we call it E. Yes, we learn by making mistakes. So we will see during the course that if we are using a classification problem with supervised learning, that if we train the model and they classify certain data sample incorrectly, and once we know the correct data and we do an improvement to that algorithm and next time it will be classified correctly. So the algorithm learn by mistakes or what is called today, some kind of algorithm we call reinforcement learning. So it's a continuous process, but what I need from you to understand the PTE combination. Okay, I will enable the transcript, but sometimes it make error and freeze the Zoom. So if it do it, next time will not enable it. Today I will enable it, don't worry. Okay, so traditional programming, what is the difference between traditional programming and machine learning? Traditional programming, we input the data here, and the program to a computer and we receive the output. The difference in machine learning, what we are doing, that we inputting the data and the output. If it's a classification problem, we enter it to a computer and we receive a program, which is the algorithm or the technique or the model module or the machine learning framework that would be applied to give us the decision or the result that we are looking for, for the problem under consideration. When do we use machine learning? Can we use machine learning for everything? Of course not. Is machine learning a solution for everything? It is a very effective solution. However, for sure there are some issues that machine learning cannot solve it. 
we, you might need linear programming and theory, whatever, any kind of other problem solving techniques. So, ML would be used when a human expertise does not exist. For example, we send something to navigate on Mars. Human cannot explain their expertise, speech recognition. So this live transcript, it's a kind of speech recognition. Models must be customized, personalized medicine. So machine learning is playing a vital role in healthcare system. Models are based on a huge amount of data. So if you receive a huge amount of data and you need to find the mean, you need to identify like a customer that who applied for a loan to the bank, and we need to find that he is a good, he has a good credit or a bad credit. So machine learning would help you in decision. So machine learning with a huge amount of data play a very vital role. And it's one of the optimal solution that help decision maker to take their decision when applying machine learning techniques. Learning isn't always useful. There is no need to learn. So why I would use machine learning to calculate the payroll or to calculate the salary? These are abstract math. So I only need to put machine learning techniques to solve these issues. Like a classic example of a task that require machine learning. With handwritten, it is a very hard sometimes to identify what is this digit or what is this number written. So for example, it's hard to say what makes a two. For here, it's clear, but this, is it two or three? Is, is this two or seven? Is this six or two? What is this? Is this a two? Is this a two? Here, this way, this way. So here, machine learning play a very important role in like what we call it computer vision problems. Question till here. Is everything is a clear guys? Any question? Okay. Okay, we'll take some more examples why we would use machine learning. Some more example of tasks that are best solved by using a learning algorithm. To recognize a pattern like facial identi identities or facial expression, handwritten or spoken word, medical images, generating patterns like generating image or motion sequence, recognizing anomalies, unusual credit card transaction, so machine learning playing, in fraud detection or unsuitable behavior with banking system, machine learning play an important role. Unusual pattern of sensor reading in a nuclear power plant. Also now it's a play a vital role in smart homes. Like you have cameras that has with motion sensors and there is a weird motion that the system is not used to. So it could flag an alert. Prediction, future stock prices or currency exchange rate or house prices prediction. So machine learning can do a good job 
in these kind of problems. So what are the applications that machine learning could do well? In web search, machine learning do well. Computational biology, finance, e-commerce, space exploration, robotics, information extraction, social network, debugging a software, and your favorite area. For example, I'm working in autonomous vehicle security. And another research I'm working on an obstacle detection for self-driven car. So these, what is your favorite? You can find that machine learning is one of the best solution to be used. So whatever I hear like from you guys, like you have different backgrounds, software engineering, robotics, uh, medicine, I'm engine medicine, in communication. So machine learning kind of play well to solve problem in your area and in your favorite area. So Samuel Chikara player, machine learning field of study that gives computer the ability to learn without being explicitly programmed. And this is, you know, in 1959, as I told you that the machine learning concept started to be erased in 1950s and maybe before. But this is the first recorded definition about from some works. Can we have an example of ML program that debugs software? Okay, so I don't know a certain software for debugging, but uh, next class, I'll show you a live example. How machine learning can debug errors in the software. If you took like a course about software testing, there is a lot of software testing a program using JUnit, using JUnit that can detect errors or for example, the test adequacy is not adequate or your software testing is not adequate using some machine learning algorithm. So I can bring some example or a YouTube that will give you this example and clarify how machine learning can like debug a software. It's a good question, however. So it's a nice question. So next class, we'll have a YouTube about this. Any other question, guys? Okay. So here we'll make some example and we will see how T, P, and E, which is task performance experience, how we can choose this point for certain problems. Improve on task T with respect to performance metric P based on an experience E. So what is the task playing checkers? What is the performance that we need to improve percentage of games won against arbitrary opponent? How this would happen? What is the E playing practice game against itself? Another example, what is the problem or the task? It's recognizing handwritten words. What is the performance we are looking for, which is the percentage of words correctly classified? So in machine learning, we look for high accuracy, but there are some other performance measures. We'll talk about them at certain point of this course. But sometimes like accuracy is not a good measure. Can anybody tell me why? If I depend only in accuracy as my performance measure, who can tell me?
if there is a class imbalance. Amazing. Yes. Also, other colleagues said false positive, false negative, true positive, true negative. So these are some other performance manager that, that we use. As simple as, assume that I have a data for 1,000 data network traffic records. 999 records of these traffic are normal traffic. And one of the 1,000, one record of these 1,000 records is an attack. So if my algorithm classify the 999 records correctly and the only one anomaly that I have, it's also classify it wrong as normal. It will give me accuracy of 99.99% .99%, right? However, the target class I'm looking, which is anomaly is not classified correctly. So here, accuracy is not a good measure. So I will look like false alarm rate, which is, I'll give you this equation during the course that will give me like the false alarm rate. So it will not be good with this situation. And why is this? Because of class imbalance, because I have more normal traffic than anomalies, which is the normal case or the real case in network traffic. So if you are sitting in your computer using some requests and some work through the internet. So most of the record that going through the channels, if I'm like monitoring your port, would be normal traffic. What is the, yes, what is the, Possibility, what is the possibility to have an attack from the records you send? It will be very low, right? Especially if you have a firewall, if you have all of these things. But it's there. I have to take care and I need machine learning to identify abnormal behavior with network data to identify anomalies. So to check my algorithm performance, I couldn't rely on accuracy only. Is that clear? Okay. So another example, we talk about the percentage of words correctly classified. Driving in four lane highway using vision sensors. This is the task. What is the performance? Average distance of travel before a human judge error. And what is the experience is a sequence of images and the steering command recorded while observing a human driver. Another task, categorize email messages as a spam or legitimate. And here guys, I'm not sure if you are familiar, uh, then some other book or example, we'll call it B9 and attack. B9 means normal traffic, legitimate mean normal traffic or normal attack or spam or malicious, different names for the same thing. Percentage of email messages correctly classified, database of email, some with a human given label. And guys, if you remember, if you are new to Western, they use now a new spam quarantine policy. Before every day at the midnight, we will receive like spam email report, and you have to check each email if it's a spam or not. And one of the like drawbacks on that spam filter that we use at Western since last year, till last year, that was if the attack or the phishing email or the spam email came from a UWO account, it will not be considered as a spam. Maybe all the students like our TA and uh, those who been last year with us noticed this one. 
Now with Office 365, they start sending us everywhere like a quarantine report, which is bitter, which is a way bitter. So how, so Western itself start to use the smart techniques with Office 365. state-of-the-art applications of machine learning. One of the hot topic nowadays in the market is the autonomous car. So it's either a, a human driving the cars and these cars are high tech like, and we start seeing them in, uh, in recent models like um, self-parking option. It came like 2011 in Ford, self-parking, and uh, like lane keep assist, adaptive cruise control. All of these machine learning and AI playing an important role in those. And with self-driven car, that the car is full of cameras and sensors. So Nevada in the States, they allow since 2011, that autonomous car to drive on roads in June 2011, which is self-driving car. In 2013, four states, Nevada, Florida, California, and Michigan have legalized autonomous car. And they start now using these techniques to have like a racing cars and the self-driven racing car. And also here in London, in London, Ontario, we have the West 5 project, which is of uh, Oxford Street West. After you pass Hyde Park, like two, three, I'm not sure how much the distance, then it will be at right. Part of this project to be a green community, zero emission community. So you will park your car at certain spot, then you will use self-driven car to drive you home. And also order deliveries, all of these things. And there is a team of Western working in the security, obstacles, image classification. There is a huge research going on carried by Western with the industry, all using machine learning and AI. So with autonomous car, machine learning is playing important role. So if you can see here, GPS, LiDAR, and now we start seeing LiDAR, uh, obstacle detection, those sensors, uh, then the stereo cameras, here laders, so many sensors. Now you see it in a big thing. This is this for test. However, once it's in there in the car, some people, they cannot notice it. And now we are working on what if the car is driven in snow, and the sensor is blocked by snow, what would happen? And this is kind of security. What do we mean by security? Safety or public safety is part of security. Not only attacks and such thing in your mind. One of the major concern of security is like to prevent hazardous situation, like accident and other things. So we are working with a team from industry on obstacle detection. How to have effective obstacle detection using machine learning. A huge of work done and there's still a lot to be completed. Here are thermos car technology. Some use laser train mapping, some use IR, infrared, it depends on the technology and how the company would use this. And some 
thing like start one of the obstacle thing that we is trying to add if there is like a bad weather condition like broke a tree in the road so the first car who see this obstacle will send it to the edge node to be updated with the gps system using the ladder to inform other cars hey slow down or the self-driving car will slow down because it has a previous knowledge from another car, there is an obstacle at this point stop. Which we call it path planning or route planning. Or choose different route, alternative route. So this figure giving like how they learn from driver behaviors. And also, like the adaptive cruise control, it will check the distance between you and the car in front of you. Uh, there is an option to choose like short distance, medium distance, large distance for the car to start applying a brake and adapt the car speed depending on the street speed. Not the street, street speed law, but how is the traffic is moving. Even if I'm like, and you see sometimes uh, near Mississauga, if you are moving from London to Mississauga, starting at Milton, even saying like 120 or 100 kilometer per hour highway. However, we cannot drive more than 20 or 30 and sometimes we stop, complete stop. So this is what we call it adaptive cruise control. Based on adaptive vision for the camera that installed under your mirror if you have adaptive adaptive cruise control in your car also in the recent year deep learning start playing also it's a kind of machine learning before we use a neural network as simple as deep learning it's a multiple layers of neural network but it shows a very beautiful result in certain problems it's not the optimal solution always because with the small data like deep learning will not perform well and we'll talk about this we'll talk about those things And here there is a face recognition and now it's like for security if they are looking for a person who's required by like security department or police sometimes using the cameras that in the street in the malls like face detection technique using machine learning hey this is x so and depending in like object models, object parts, edges, pixels. So they will divide, like classify the image to different way using deep neural network. So like RNN, they are doing good with image recognition. And here how they learn the objects. So they divide it into parts or many things then they can be detected. And here we can train the model in multiple objects, not like face recognition. That this is a human, this is a car, this is a bike, whatever. If we are using it to classify things on the road, there will not be just only vehicle or a human. There are some different things. Like car faces, motorbikes and airplanes. Here, road, sand here what i'm talking like if there is a tree here i have a storm and it's broken in the street it will give and this would be informed to the system and it will raise a flag to other car coming from this road if there is a tree obstacle here here the original image here how using the classification and recognition, image recognition or computer vision, 
how it will be look like inside the computer. Here is the input images. Here sample, what we call it feed forward to the algorithm. Here sample from fall inference, how it will be looked like. So any change here to be easier for the computer to classify, hey, this is X. Because, you know, some people sometimes like with beer, without beer, with long hair, with bald. They change in there. So it will divide the face to parts. It will try to take different way or level in order whatever changes happen still be classified correctly. In the automatic speech, the application will receive the voice like in waves. We'll start using the voice as features, as features. Just give me a sec to attach my charger. So we enter it to neural network, then we'll use a decoder, then neural network model, they will be trained and start using, same as the one that we are using here in Zoom. And MLU are used to predict of phone states from the sound spectrum. So it could be used in voice. The impact of deep learning in speech technology and you can see like recently like the phones, Siri in, in uh, iOS based devices. I'm not sure what is called in Android. Is there a feature for like to give a command, uh, command to the phone like Siri and iPhone? Is there anything in Android based uh, devices? Who can tell me? Oh, yes, what yes. Okay, yeah. Google. What is it called? It's called OK Google. When you say OK Google, uh, it OK Google Assistant. OK, thank you. It's a Google Assistant. And in, sorry, because I'm, uh, oh, uh, I have iPhone. So in iPhone, we call it Siri. So these based on uh, voice recognition and with the like huge and rapid development that have been taken in the last few years with, when using deep learning models. Okay, now you'll ask me, you talk machine learning, machine learning. What are the type of learning that would be used in machine learning? So we have, a few years ago, we were talking about supervised learning, unsupervised learning, and CP supervised learning. Nowadays, we start saying reinforcement learning also, we add it. So supervised learning, we call or some other book call it inductive learning. So what is given? Training data and the labels. So the algorithm will know if it's classified correctly or not because we know the class. Is this a normal traffic in the network or attack? Yeah, also uh, Amazon Alexa, yes. Also another example like Siri, Google Assistant and Amazon Alexa. So in supervised learning, I enter it as a training model and the model knows what is the correct label or a class of this record. And they will see what is the algorithm classify it. And supervised learning will do what is called a clustering. We'll see what is the common and shared features between certain data points in the data set. And they will group, try to group them. Semi-supervised learning, we have training data and we have a few, some records are labeled. The other are not. Reinforcement learning use like the reward way from a sequence of action, we'll talk about it somewhere in the course. The most common supervised learning technique is regression mode. 
like if we have a given x, y, y1, x2, y2, x, n, y, n, learn a function f, x to predict y given x. y is real valued regression. So here we have the pairs of data, x1, the feature one, and y1, x2, y2, x, n, y, n, which is record and the label. Y is real valued equal regression. So September Arctic Sea Ice Extent. So these are the data points. These are the data points, and here are the classes that get in by regression. We'll have a practical model using Python. So we'll take during the course some live examples, how those would be, and what if we change like this parameter, what will happen and why. We'll talk about all of this because guys, when we start studying technique, I don't like like try and error. For example, you have a problem and you have the data set. Okay, let's try uh, apply SVM, deep learning, uh, decision tree, and which one give me the better result? Okay, this is my uh, model. I call this try and error. No, we should visualize the data and I will teach you how to visualize the data. We will visualize the data and based on the data shape and the distribution among the classes, it will give me an indication. For example, if I'm using support vector machine, SVM, if the data is linear separable, we'll talk about all of these topics later. If the data is linear separable, then I will use simple SVM with linear kernel because it's lighter in terms of, co of complexity or computational complexity. But if the data are of, or the visualization showed me nonlinearity, is the linear kernel with SVM would be a good option to use? No. So we need to understand the data under consideration. Then based on this analysis, we will choose the suitable techniques that I would expect it will perform well, not to try and error. Because we see some papers published, they use all possible techniques. K and N, SVM, random forest, whatever. Oh, uh, then SVM with Gaussian kernel perform the best. Of course you, and they didn't say why. No, we will study the machine learning We'll study the data under consideration. Then we'll start picking, do we need a feature selection? Do we need an outlier uh, solution? Is there noisy data? Do we have a class imbalance? How we would solve them? So I'll give you from life example, from my experience, from our research group experience with the practical engineering problem. Here, supervised learning for classification. Here, we're like, we will benign, which means normal, and malignant, which means a cancer. How would you classify it? As a cancer or normal? Here, another classification. So, when we talk a value, which is in some engineering problem, we call it estimation. Then it's a regression problem. Here, when we are talking about the class, is this a cancer or not? It's a classification problem. And Y here would not be a number, which is the label. Y, we'll use to use X for feature, Y for label, or a class. Label means a class. So class normally when a classification problem is categorical, not a numerical. If it's a numerical and estimation, it would be a regression problem. Is that clear? So you see here how it's predicted as a B9, however, it's 
a cancer. And here it's a normal, but predicted as a cancer. So there is mistakes. Here, what do we mean by linear separable? So if I have this, when I visualize the data, I see it's like this against the class. So this data is linear separable. So if I use a linear kernel with SVM, it would perform well, I'm sure. I'm sure it, would, uh, it will perform well. Okay, unsupervised learning. If we have a given X1, X2 as a feature, uh, as a features without labels, and here we try to group them, to group them in a clusters. We call it clusters. Here for the genomics application, a group individual by genetic similarity. So here it's a start like greens are from the same cluster, blues, red, whatever. Here based on the genes, they classify them based on the genes. So for example, social network analysis, like those are professional, those are normal user, those are like sales. It would be clusters as a market segmentation here. How, how is the social media market, for example? Also here for speakers, we can hear the voice and we can like cluster the voice based on their loud. And we put those are at the same loud. Here they are at the same level of loudness. And, uh, and we can distribute those voice records as clusters. Reinforcement learning, that would be given a sequence of state and action with delayed rewards output a policy. Policy is mapping from states action that tells you what to do in a given state. Example, credit assignment problem, game playing, robot and a maze, balance a poll. And we'll talk about reinforcement learning more and more by the end of the term. Here, for example, we have the agent environment interface. This is one kind of reinforcement learning. As I told you, we'll talk about it later on the term. This game, like in YouTube, you can press the link and see the game. Uh, these done by reinforcement learning and how you will get the rewards and all of these things. Uh, here also there is a uh, learn policy from user demonstration. This done by Andrew and G teams in Stanford. So you can see the YouTube also how they control the helicopter. Framing a learning problem. So designing a learning system, designing a learning system, choose the training experience, choose exactly what is to be learned. For what we call it target function, what we call it target function. Choose how to represent the target function, choose a learning algorithm to infer the target function from the experience. So here, like we have training data and testing data. So here we use the training data for the learner, we add the knowledge performance element, and it's a complete process. And there is a difference between training versus test distribution. We generally assume that the training and the test sample are independently drawn from the same overall distribution of data. We call this IIDs which stands for independent and identically distributed. If example are not independent requires collective classification. If this distribution is different requires transfer learning. We'll talk about those, how to split your data as testing. If you will do any class balancing, you will do it in that training data, not the testing data. There are some certain steps that will be learned during the term. But here today is an introductory. I'm giving you like a head ups about everything. So machine learning, 
tens of thousand of machine learning algorithm now. So anybody in machine learning cannot know all kind of algorithm, all kind of techniques, 100 new every year. We'll have sometimes now, I believe we reach to thousands every year of new techniques in machine learning. Every machine learning algorithm has three components, representation, optimization, and evaluation. At certain point, we should use optimization. That's why we put at the beginning of the course like optimization revision. So a numerical function like linear regression in neural network support vector machine, if we have these are example of machine learning techniques and we classify them about their function. If we use a numerical function, we'll use linear regression in neural network support vector machine. If we use symbolic function, we'll use decision tree rules and rules in first order predicate logic. If we use instance-based function, then we'll use the nearest neighbor and the case-based. If we are following probabilistic model, then naive bias, Bayesian network, hidden Markov models, probabilistic context-free grammars, Markov network would be the technique or the most common known techniques that we'll use if we are targeting probabilistic machine learning framework. What are the optimization? We talk about optimization. The first one with regression we'll use or logistic regression, we use a gradient descent. And it has like perceptron and back propagation classification technique, dynamic programming, uh, hidden Markov model, and the PCFG model, divide and conquer decision tree rule learning. If we use evol evolutionary technique or optimizer, they use genetic algorithm, genetic programming, neuroevolution. And if we are using probabilistic, we'll use Bayesian optimization. And we have two types like uh, Gaussian and uh, Parsian tree, Bayesian optimizer. What are the evaluation? We talk about accuracy. We have a precision and recall. We have squared error, likelihood. Uh, put, put, uh, the probability, the posterior probability, cost, margin, entropy, in uh, like feature selection. If I'm using the information gain, we'll use the entropy. Also, decision tree use entropy. Uh, KL uh, divergence, etc. There are different evaluation method that could be used. And same as your colleague said about true positive, true, all of them based on true positive, true negative, false positive and false negative. ML in practice, it's a loop of this point, understand the domain, the domain, prior knowledge and goals of machine learning techniques, data integration, selection, cleaning, pre-processing. It's one of the most important steps before applying any machine learning technique. Choose the model to learn it. So I will use probabilistic, like I'll use naive bias. Interpret result. This is what I was talking. We need to interpret the result. Why naive bias not, is not performing well with this data set. I'll give you an information about naive bias. We'll talk about it when we reach there. Naive bias by assumption, assume that the, that the data normally distributed, which is not the case in most of the data set. And also, uh, naive bias, one of its fe features is consider that each feature is dependent, uh, independent from the other feature. And some kind, sometimes we have feature dependency. So naive bias will not perform well in these kind of data sets. So we need to give a reason why SVM perform well with Gaussian kernel. However, naive bias is not performing well. Because we know by philosophy or the design of naive bias, it's considered that the data are normally distributed, the feature are independent, which is not the case in my data set. Or I will use to have naive bias perform well. There is a solution by using feature selection based on correlation based and to have the feature that not correlated to each other, then we would apply 
naivize them, it will give better result. So there is a solution. So I'll teach you the, the course through these things with reasonings, why this technique do this, what is the nature of this data set, what is the suitable technique, what is the solution to use that technique, we'll talk in this way. I feel this is better. Don't take it like as we am naive bias, apply it and try and be wrong. I'm not many researcher, they are following this school, but no, for me, no. If you understand the thing, it would be easier. And your contribution in the work would be, or in research, would be highly appreciated by others. Consolidate and deploy discovered knowledge. So it's a loop of these points. Listen, learn, this is what I was talking, why this technique or X technique is not performing well, or do I need to tune certain parameter to have it perform well? So these are learned, we run the, the classifier in the default parameters and we'll see the result. Then, oh, why is that? So these are the lesson, how we know that like naive bias is not suitable with X data set. It's from the lesson learned. It's from the lesson learned. Okay. A brief history of machine learning start 1950s till today. And here are the, what we'll cover in this course, mostly. And I'm done for today. If you have any question, please feel free to ask. If not, see you next Tuesday with uh, the probability revision. Questions? Okay, guys, see you next week. You are free to leave. Thank you.